In today's tutorial, it's about decorating and it's the bubble bath mat and we're going to be doing this one next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the bubble bath mat. I love this bath mat. It was actually a lot of fun to do. I learned a new stitch and it was called the bubble. It's called the bubble stitch and it's actually kind of fun and it wasn't as hard as I expected it to be and of course that makes it fabulous. In today's project we're going to need the brand new yarn. It's called Bernat Maker Home Deck and you were going to need a total of two balls with this. I've done a mini sample just to show you and also for those that love diagrams there is a diagram available. I'm going to teach you how to change the sizes if you wish to customize this to make this a different size if you prefer. So without further ado let's say dive into this pattern a little bit more. Let me show you my little example and then see if this is the right project for you. So here's my little mini example and you'll notice that on one side that you will have these gap spaces on the other side. That's just part of the pattern. It's just because of the bubbles actually caused that to happen and that's part of the texture of this particular and it does happen on both sides. So that's part of the neat thing about this particular idea. Um, this will sit flat when it's laying down because it is a heavier yarn. It is 72% uh, cotton and 28% nylon and uh, it should actually grip onto the floor but of course always uh, pay attention to that when you're stepping out of the shower uh, etc. when you're uh, having wet feet. So today what we're going to do is that we're going to cover making this. You are going to need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today. Just as a full disclaimer I'm using a six millimeter size crochet hook today is size J and the reason for it is that I don't have a comfort grip in size K and I prefer the comfort grip. So I've reduce down just a little bit. It's just for my own convenience and you can do the same thing. The size mat that we're going to be uh, working on if you follow the pattern it's chaining of 91. It will be 32 inches by 20 inches and uh, either way you can customize it and I'm going to teach you how to do that in just a moment. I'm now looking back at the pattern. It said to chain 91 to start. If you want a different size you have to keep it an odd number. So it can be 89, it can be 73, it can be anything as long as it's odd in order to keep the balance within today's project. So what we have here is a diagram and so what you're going to notice is that you'll see the bubbles. Uh, for example you'll see five here. The next time you'll only see four in the middle. This here is the gapping spaces that I pointed out to you right on the sides just there and so that's not a deal breaker for me and then the next time it's five again and then it's four. So you want to end and I put the here end on row four before the border. So you want to get it so that it's opposite to what this side is. So that you'll see that there's more bubbles on this side than this side and you'll see if you follow the diagram all the way around and then you just have to make sure that you have enough stitches in the side. If you put way too many stitches in the side here what's going to happen it will buckle and start to ruffle on you. So you have to use your best judgment when you're going all the way around in order to keep it. So today I'm going to show you a, a small example including doing the border and I think you'll really like the bubble stitch. It's actually a lot of fun. So let's begin with the slip knot. I'm going to leave an extra long string so I can hide it in afterward. And remember if you're doing it exactly as per the pattern it was chaining of 91 but if you'd like to substitute you just make it an odd number. So in this case I'm going to make it 11. That's an odd number. So I'm just going to chain and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So there is my odd number there and let's move on and what we have to do is that we have to add an additional um, actually no we just keep it an odd number and then we'll keep it just like this. So sorry about that. So an odd number it is. So now we're going to do the bubble. Now here we go. So we're going to count back 1, 2, 3 and go to the fourth. Turn that over and get the back loop of the chain and I want you to bubble. So the very first time you're going to see it's kind of fiddly at first. I can guarantee you this that it's going to be fiddly in the first probably two rows but once you get enough material in your hand to hold this it goes a lot smoother. It's just a matter of getting by that first two rows I'm telling you. So I've just now turned it over fourth chain from the hook and we're going to wrap the yarn and go into the fourth okay and pull through and keep that on your hook. Don't want to be too much tension. Wrap the yarn going into the same stitch pull through and keep that on the hook. You're looking for a total of seven of these loops here on the hook. Wrap the yarn and go one more time in and pull through and now there's a total of seven. Do you see that? So now wrap the yarn and pull through all seven and then chain one and you're ready for the next bubble. That's as hard as it gets. So you skip the next stitch and then bubble into the next. So let's do the next bubble. So wrap into the next one. So you, so you skipped one, you went into the next one after that, pull through. So then wrap again, same one, pull through, 
wrap again, pull through and pull through. So now you have your seven back on here, wrap and pull through all of these, all seven loops and then chain one. So back down to the chain, skip one, going into the next one, pull through. So it's a bubble, they're all bubbles, this whole thing is a bubble. <laughs> so just keep on doing to you collect your seven. So just count to three really and pull through and then chain one and then skip the next one and bubble into the next. I've gotten used to holding it. I'm telling you um, it wasn't this easy yesterday when I was doing it for the first time. It's just a matter you get used to the, to the method. So pull through all seven then chain one and you're now almost done. So you are actually here, we've just bubbled, you got one stitch left and you are simply just going to double crochet into the final stitch. Okay, so what's gonna happen on this particular one, you had your chaining of three here that counts as a double crochet, you got your bubbles in the middle and here's your double crochet on the other side if you wanna have that to make sense. Let's move up to row number two and let's turn our work. Let's begin. So every other row the bubbles will then change their location. So this time there's four here bubbles that you see. Next time there will only be three and they're gonna be in between the existing bubbles below and then the next time there will be four once again. So row number two we're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four. That counted as one double crochet and a chain one and your first bubble is in between the next two bubbles. Okay so just go right in there, wrap it first, go right into the space in between them and start bubbling up. So just keep wrapping that hook till you get your seven and then pull through all seven loops just like that. So now chain one. So the next one is in between the next two bubbles. So just wrap in and keep doing that so you get your, your seven. And again you can go pretty quick on this once you get the rhythm. Chain one and then bubble into the next, in between the next two. Okay and then pull through just like that. And now this time you got to chain one. Okay and then you double crochet in this time because there's no more bubbles in between anymore because it's right into the end. So you're going to at the top of the turning chain here you're going to double crochet. So don't go into the space, just go right into the top of the turning chain. And that completed off row number two. Let's turn our work and do row number three. So row number three what's gonna happen is that we got four bubbles down here, then we went to three. This time we're gonna have bubbles now uh, on the outside of these three and in between. So to do row number three we're gonna immediately chain up three and then we're gonna bubble directly into the space right underneath it. That's actually a chain one there just uh, for argument's sake and then pull, oops I dropped my stitch. It does happen. Let me try that again. So we're just gonna bubble. So we just wrap it once. Just like so and pull through and then we're gonna chain one. Now the next bubble will appear in between the two other bubbles. Just like that. Chain one and then next two in between the next two bubbles put another bubble. I can see this being very comfortable to walk on too. So now you got that chain one and the next one is in the final space here on the other side of that other bubble. Right there pull through. Chain one and then you're going to double crochet and did you see how I just moved that? I want to be in the top of, I want to be in the third chain up. Remember how we chained four? I want to be in the third chain for a regular double crochet. So that was completing off row number three. So let's uh, continue and let's go on for row number four. So let's turn our work and do row number four. So this time there was three bubbles here, there's four here. So we're gonna go back to three again this time around. So this one here is just like row number two, it's the same thing. So chaining a four, okay and then you're going to immediately just jump in between the first two bubbles. Okay so this is the outside so go right in between and you wanna bubble right into there. Just like that, chain one and then go into a bubble in the middle. 
So this is all you need to do is just you just have to continue to just look at the diagram and just do opposite to what is in below and it's actually not a hard thing to do. So you're just bubbling in between the bubbles and if you're ever confused just look to the row below. So the row below had four, the row below had three so this time I have to then stop. So I chain one first and then I just double crochet to the outside here to finish that one off. Okay, so what's gonna happen then for the outside for the border you wanna finish off on row uh, what appears to be row number four. So the outs when we started we had four bubbles here. This time on this side there's only gonna be three and so you wanna be on the uh, on the opposite side of the one that's on here. So if this for example was ten, this one's nine, you wanna make sure that on here it was finishing in the nine. So let's uh, review on how to go all the way around this and again you can go as big as you need to go and it's really quite simple. So let's do the border. So the border if you look at the diagram we're gonna immediately just start chaining up one. You notice how I never fastened off I just started and come and this is the ending of it coming all the way around. So I want to start off and I wanna turn my work and I wanna go across the top. So basically every stitch gets a double crochet as I go across the top. The only questionable thing on this particular one is going all in the sides. So the next one is in a chain one space. The next one is on top of a bubble. The next one's in a chain one space. The next one's in top of a bubble. And the next one's in a chain one space. And then I'm on a corner. So on the corner I wanna go right into an actual chain stitch itself and I wanna place in five double crochets in the same stitch. That'll cause it to start turning and doing the nice rounded edge for a corner. So that was four and five. So now what I wanna do is that I want to come down the side. Now I can either go into a gap space but then that kinda makes that gap space even more open. So I wanna go right into a chain and I just wanna equally space my double crochets going down. If you look at the diagram it kinda shows you where to put them as well. But I trust in myself enough to be able to do this so I'm just, just spacing them out just roughly as I go down the side. And again I wanna make sure I go into chain work and not to an actual physical gap because it makes gaps really open up if uh, you have that as an issue. There you go. And once I get all the way down to the base to the bottom, I've got one more to do before I get there. So once I get all the way to the bottom just pulling everything tight. So in the corner I'm just gonna place in my five double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five. And now I'm on the on I'm at the bottom now and so you'll see stitch work. So you can do the bubble for one, chain one for another. So go right into, I go right into a space in that one. And then a bubble and you just go all the way across just equally spacing this out. So I'm eventually gonna get to the other corner. Okay, there's the last bubble and now I wanna go into a chain on the outside here and I wanna put in five double crochets then to turn the corner once again. There you go and then I wanna equally space up then going up the side and again going into some chain work not into spaces on the side. Again you can continue to look at that diagram on where they suggest putting it um, but if you're experienced like me you probably couldn't get away with it and actually end up with probably the right counts on both sides in order to make this work. And if you're off by one stitch, if somebody's literally sitting there counting, <laughs> they don't have much else to do. So um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You just like make it or fake it. So you're gonna come up all the way to the end and this is where we came out. 
where we did the chain one or say chain three. That was one of the five. So you wanna come to where that one is originating out of and you wanna place four double crochets into that space because the chaining of three counted as one of the five. And then when you have that done, just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three and then just use a darning needle and just hide in your work. And this would be how you would do a bath mat just like so. This is a small example. So let me just trim my yarn and I can pull it through and just use a darning needle and I can just start stretching things and making things work and it's really quite an easy project to do. So this is how you do a bath mat. It's really quite interesting. It's a bubble bath mat and this is a, another great free pattern available on yarnspirations.com. Until next time, have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.